All right, on the line right now is uh, Tom in Frankfurt. Tom getting a shot. Good morning, Tom. Getting a shot. Good morning, at, Tom. Winning $100 in cash. $100 of this man's money. Say hi, Joe. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Would you want me to answer the question for you? <laughs> oh, oh, boy. No. That is your first <laughs> test question. Absolutely not. Trust me. Okay. I love giving away Joe's money. Uh, so this is going to be a very, very tough question. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, you'll have 10 seconds or 7 seconds to actually answer this uh, question. Oh, I love giving away Joe's money. 7 seconds to answer this question. Joe Habike is in studio right now. He's wearing a tie. What color is his yellow tie? Ready? Go. What? Yellow. It's yellow. Winning, winning. We have a winning. winner. What? And by the way, and by the way, I, I, a lot of credit that could have slipped right over Tom's head and it didn't. And Tom, congratulations. You get a hundred dollars in cash. Congratulations. What a great sure. question. Thank All you, right. sir. Thanks, Joe. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah, he had everything Enjoy. to do with it. Yeah. Thanks for wearing that tie, Joe. Yeah. Okay, Andrew, take care of him. If, uh, you know, Bill, I have, you would, I have a please. question though that okay. I want that I, I would like you to ask the right. uh, ambassador. Well, why don't you ask yourself? I well, mean, I just want to know what the ambassador to the Catholic Church actually does and why we need one. I'm well, just curious. Francis I, Francis Rooney uh, served as U.S. ambassador to the Holy See, the Catholic Church, under George W. Bush, and after the terrorist after the terrorist attacks in San Bernardino and Paris, Brussels, now. The ambassador asking the question, is this war yet? Good morning, uh, Francis Rooney. Thanks for coming on this morning. Thank you for having me on. So starting right off the bat, uh, uh, Joe would ask the question, what is your role as ambassador to the, uh, to the Vatican? Well, uh, ambassador to the Vatican does pretty much the same thing that any other secular uh, uh, state ambassador would do. We, we meet with the Secretary of State's office over there to conduct our routine diplomatic interchange to get yeah. them to do and say things we want them to do and to, uh, you know, kind of polish up on disagreements. Also speak up a lot about America and what we stand for. They call The State Department calls it spreading understanding of American values. Yeah. And, then there's, and then there's a lot of entertainment and stuff like you, that. You, you, know, you, you know what is, um, it, you know, years and years ago, uh, the Vatican, you know, you either did as you were told or they'd send an army in and take you out. Um, or find another way to take care of you. That certainly has changed over the years. and But yet today, uh, we found, in, and especially with this current pope, the Vatican does have a great deal of influence. Oh, the, well, that's why I wrote my book, The Global Vatican, is to, mm -hmm. make, to, to talk about some of the influence that they've exercised in the past and to make the argument that they're just as relevant today as they have been in the past, yeah. especially with all this religious stuff going on. Right, there's so much uh, of that. All right, what are you, uh, you're asking the question, is this war yet? Um, I kind of understand, but what do you mean? Well, I, I, the the Obama administration has had had a fairly uh, vapid response and, yeah. very, and, and an inconsistent response to what's happening in Iraq and Syria. And the way I look at it, it's a war. I mean, the, the so-called caliphate has declared war on us. They said we're going to destroy your Rome, which is a metaphor for the Western way of life as much as specific religious attacks. And yeah. and so I say we treat them like it's a war. I would I would close off Syria. From the world, I would close off Iraq from the world, and then I would uh, probably consider just letting them partition into the Sunni part, the Shiite part, and the Kurdish part, and uh, focus on the radical Sunnis. And if you, if you close those places off, it'd make it pretty hard on them to exist. Yeah, you think I, I would be very interested to? to uh, we'll never know, really. We'll never know. But don't you think it would be different if there was no Afghanistan uh, and there was no Iraq war? And ISIS came to be, and we were going through exactly what we're going through today, but didn't live with the longest war in our in our history. That our reaction would be different. I, I think there's absolutely no doubt that the American people will be a lot more willing to put yeah. ground troops on the ground over there. Mm -hmm. Not that that's necessarily uh, a good strategy. One sure. thing we learned from Af Iraq and Afghanistan is how limited is our capability on the ground. Yeah. Well, isn't it really what we learned that half measures don't work? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you're either going to you're either going to take care of business. It's very difficult. Oh. Vietnam taught us that. Right. right. So we continued to make the mistake all the way up because, you know, um, you're either going to take somebody out and finish the finish the job, or you're going to sit here. You need to have a, a rule book. You have to pull out before you can fire your weapon. I mean, right. it's absolutely ridiculous. Let me ask you, though, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Francis Rooney, you were the ambassador under George W. Bush, 
and there was a, a, a battle within the administration. Um, Colin Powell felt that, uh, I mean, this goes back to George H.W. Bush, but the, the thought was that you don't go in and take over Baghdad because we, we are going to, you're going to open up a can of worms. And, uh, but we did, uh, you know, George W. went in, and this is, do you feel this has created what has happened today? Had we followed his father's advice, basically to stay and, and allow Saddam Hussein to exist, would we be better off today, you think? Uh, yeah. Well, there's no doubt we created a level of instability that was certainly unforeseen yeah. and unleashed a huge can of worms that I think, uh, and that's one issue of it. The other issue is exactly as you say, as Secretary Powell's superior overwhelming force doctrine which is the only way to do something if you're yeah. going to risk American life. That goes right. back to MacArthur in Korea. He said mm-hmm. the same thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the whole thing was it was it was a very controversial decision, and it turns out that, that there were these religious and cultural forces there that we didn't fully un- uh, realize how, how difficult it would be to unify that area and turn it into a country. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you know, I, I studied a little bit about it when I was in college a million years ago, and the principle has been that we never really understood it or appreciated, um, you know, the principles that they, they follow their lives based on. And the other thing is, why wouldn't we just sealed the place off and not let anything in and out and starve them economically? That's, That's exactly the, what I wrote in my article. Yeah, right. So ring fence them. If it look when we were fighting Germany, you couldn't just go out of Germany yeah. uh, without us tracking you down. You couldn't fly over the United States from Germany. You were they were enemy combatant trying to kill us off. Right. And I think we have that thing right now. If we if we ring fence those countries and no one can go in and out, I think we probably all end up starving to death. Uh, what do you think of the current pope? Well, I think he's complex. I mean, I was real excited to have a new world pope, you know, yep. from our part of the world, not just a European or mm-hmm. Italian. Yep. But at the same time, he's, he said some very strange things about economics. And, and, and I thought that, that we got him schooled up pretty good when he came to the United States. The AEI, American Enterprise Institute, Arthur Brooks, gave some information to him so he could see the difference between uh, capitalism, crony, ca- crony corrupt capitalism, Argentina style, and our version of free markets that's created the biggest middle class yeah. in the world. And, and I thought he'd figure that out, but then when he went to Mexico, it seems like he regressed just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, last question for you. Um, it's a political world out there right now. What do you think? What do you think of Donald Trump? Well, you know, Donald Trump is reflecting the same anger and frustration that I certainly feel and a lot of people feel after yeah. seven years and two months of Obama and after years of stagnant wage growth and you know, we've got to come up with answers for the American people here. Do uh, you think, uh, can he beat Hillary Clinton in the uh, in the general election? Boy, I don't know. I've heard the experts speculate on both sides of that, haven't you? Well, listen, uh, what I, the only thing I can tell you is... He's the, good. He's the, good. The experts have been speculating, and they've been so wrong this time around. It's, oh, yeah. uh, it's tough to know yeah. what's going to happen, I guess. So. Uh, it I, is, but you know, the guy's a legitimate... He's making legitimate points. Yeah. I mean, when he says, don't let any Muslims in here... He's reflecting something we all think. We may right. not want to say no Muslims, but right. we want to say no bad people, no people that can't get a job. Right? Isn't there a way we could have said it without saying that? And there was, but I guess he wouldn't have gotten he wouldn't have gotten the publicity had he said it a different way. Oh, maybe. I mean, what I say it is that we in this era we need to know everybody that comes in and out of our yeah. country, what they're doing here. And we need to make sure that they're the right kind of people we want to let in and out of this country. And that means overhauling these visa visa programs that leak like a sieve, and we're designed yeah. for a much quieter and gentler era. And and make sure that if you come to this country and we let you in, we know where you are and that you can get a job and add value over here. Turns out the biggest fantasy of all is that uh, we don't know. We aren't really tracking every phone call. We're not tracking every email. The government really doesn't know what's going on inside every person's life. Because if they did, they'd have caught those guys in San Bernardino right off the bat. Yeah, and, and I think we have to recognize that if we're kind of at war with the movement, yeah, not necessarily a sovereign, that we have to apply wartime levels of surveillance and yeah. interdiction to these people right here in America. Uh, Ambassador Francis Rooney, we really appreciate the time this morning. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me on. Okay, quick break. We'll come right back. Uh, I want you to, uh, at least Wheel is uh, coming up next, the legal analyst. She's on O'Reilly all the time in Fox News. Uh, she does us each week with three legal questions. She analyzes each one, and she's coming up next. Here's Christine with an update.
Good morning, Christine Bellino. Good morning. A loud boom heard by some residents in Oswego County was simply a beaver dam being blown up. A Utica man arrested on drug charges after leading police on a chase and Rome Memorial Hospital in St. Joe's in Syracuse announcing an affiliation agreement. Cloud showers today with a high of 49 degrees. Tonight, 33. Tomorrow, light morning rain and a high of 54. Currently, it's 46 at WIB Action. Listen, it's going to be, they're saying right now, in the 60s for Sunday. Easter Sunday is going to be a beautiful day. And what a beautiful day to start things off with an Easter brunch at Danielle's uh, at the Valley View. From breakfast favorites like scrambled eggs and bacon and sausage and the roasted potatoes to delectable baked Virginia ham, prime rib, haddock oregano, and chicken bianco. Plus, they'll have a pasta bar with penne hats and tortellini and choices of sauces. Uh, tantalizing sides as well, greens, Danielle, garlic mashed potatoes, soup salad, and so much more to choose from. It is one of the nicest brunches you're going to find, and it's at Danielle's on the Valley View uh, this Sunday. There are three seatings, 11 a.m., 1 p.m., or 3 p.m. It's $28.95 for adults, $25.95 for seniors, $15.95 for children, ages 5 to 10, and under 5, eat free on Easter Sunday pretty awesome it's a great sunday event and it makes it easy for you at home you don't have to worry about all the cleanup and all that easter brunch this sunday at danielle's make the reservation now 733-8358 danielle's of valley view just off memorial parkway in utica